let me just start off by saying that I am terrible at making videos and I have so many videos in the works right now and I've not been able to keep track of a single one that I'm doing. I don't know how Sarah does it, but go follow her channel at just my typewriter, way better than mine. But anyway, this video has been a long time coming. Hopefully you can see this here. I will be panning the camera over in a moment. This is a Royal Portable Typewriter, and it's one that I've been doing a full restoration on, so if you followed any of my other channels here, uh, like Instagram, you'll probably have noticed this machine appear in a few posts in parts. I had the carriage off the machine, stripped down all the type bars out. This is getting a full restoration, but it's also a really good candidate to go over how to install a draw band. As you can see, this carriage is very flippy. Um, Flippy, floppy? I don't know. It, it, it doesn't, doesn't do anything. And in order to make it do something, we need to install a draw band. So we're going to go over very briefly and make this a very short video. Because the longer I talk, the more ridiculous I sound. Short video on how to do a draw band. I have no idea if I'm even in focus here. So, let's get to it. So I just looked back at the footage and... Um, realize that the top of my head is completely cut off and the angle sucks and literally everything about it sucks. But what's not going to suck is this beautiful typewriter. I mean, just look at that custom paint finish. I mean, this is going to be a fabulous machine. So, there is a previous video that I did about a year ago on how to install the carriage of a Royal typewriter with a straw. Now, if your carriage is off the machine, I recommend looking at that video first and I'll link it in the description. And that'll just tell you how to position the four ball bearings and their respective little uh, retaining gears, little orbital things, um, into place so that your carriage is freely moving. Now, once you've installed your carriage, we're also going to want to take a look at these adjustment screws. Now, not every typewriter has these, but especially on the Royal P, you're going to want to adjust the width of these carriage rails so that the carriage does not wiggle around at all but still rides very smoothly. In fact, I think it's a little tight in there, so I'm going to take my long reach screwdriver and make that adjustment really quick. All right, that feels a lot better. Now, just to preface this once more, this is not specifically just the Royal P, but this is a good general idea on how most draw bands get attached to a typewriter. And this is a basic model to do it on, and generally, most Royal typewriters are all pretty much the same. So I'm going to bring the camera over here now. We're going to look down at the left side of the machine, so the the user's left side. And we can notice that the mainspring is nice and prominent there. And if we rotate that mainspring, we're going to see a slot. Now, hopefully, I don't have like one of those fancy little pointers like uh, Joe Van Cleve does. We do have a screwdriver. So there's your slot there. You'll notice there is an opening on the side and a large fat section right in there. The end of our draw band is going to have a very large knot, and we're going to shove that knot through the side of the draw band there, make sure I'm in frame, and it's going to hook up into the top section of that hole and, uh, well, draw the carriage, I guess. I want to take a look at two other draw bands really quick, two common styles that you'll come across. This one's off a of Hammond. Um, but it's very common on like Royals and Underwords and a lot of desktop typewriters. You'll actually have a tab cut into the side of the drum there and you will either have a metal piece that loops over that tab or you will be tying a loop like a noose but not a noose in the end of your draw band and you'll slip that little loop over the, um, the tab. On other draw bands, this is also really common on portables, mostly European portables. The draw band will actually hook inside a minuscule little hole in the um, mainspring housing. Well, that's as close as I can focus. Um, yeah, so sometimes you can thread it through an additional hole back here. You'll tighten up the mainspring so the coils are away from the wall of the spring drum. And you'll thread the end of the draw band through the hole, through the tiny hole, and with a knot on the end, and you'll just pull it tight. Sometimes the draw bands won't have an easy access point for that hole. And in that case, you'll need to take it out of its housing. You'll need to open the actual drum itself and then manually install the draw band from that point forward. And that is a big pain in the ass. Oh, can I say that? Pain in the butt. And um, yeah, you get the picture. 
Sometimes uh, draw bands, or sorry, sometimes main springs, like this IBM Selectric main spring, won't have any draw band at all. It'll actually be a carrier return cable that's around a shaft further back, but we're not going to talk about that one in this video. Uh, this is a mainspring off of an Oliver. It's another good example of a draw, of a, sorry, not a draw band, a mainspring that has to come apart in order for you to get the draw band in there. You'll notice that there is a fat section and a skinny section, and if you're lucky, sometimes you can just shove the knot into that fat section there and um, pull the knot through into the skinny section and that'll secure it. Otherwise, you'll need to undo the screws or the tabs or whatever, however it's put together. Sometimes it's just uh, pressure fit and install the uh, draw band when it's open. But for most machines, like the Royals, you'll be able to slot the knot. I hate manual focus lenses for video work, it sucks. Anyway, slot the knot through there and pull it tight. There is one additional very common type of mainspring drum, and I don't think I have an example of it on hand, so we'll just turn our attention down to my blank workbench here and imagine that this is the wall of the mainspring drum. Oh, that's really tiny and hard to see. Give me one moment. Okay, so we'll imagine that this is the wall of the mainspring drum, and in it we'll have a almost triangular slot. So generally, we will stick the knot in the end of the draw band through the large section and pull it down to the skinny section. And that skinny section is what actually holds the knot in place, and it's held under tension of the mainspring itself. So with that out of the way, let's grab a piece of string. I'll show you how to measure it out, what to do with the ends, and how to install it. And hopefully, this machine will be typing in just a few minutes. Now, what I like to use for a draw band is paracord, but not the actual cable itself. We're just going to pull out those little nylon strands from inside of the, of the cordage, and this is what I end up using. Um, you can use any sort of strong, tough string. People use fishing line, but I find fishing line to like to coil and retain this spooled shape, and that makes it really difficult to install. Stuff like this is super, super strong. It doesn't fray easily. Um, any sort of nylon string will do great. So, you'll also need something with fire. Um, and I normally have that kind of crap on hand. Okay, so for a machine like the Royal Portable, all you generally need to do is tie a loop on the end. So we're going to just cross the string over, make a loop, and then we're going to hold those two strands together and tie that into a knot, a really just basic knot, and pull that tight. And that's all you need is this little hook under the right end of the carriage that you put that onto, and it should pull just fine. Sometimes you need to just tie a single knot and there's a clamp under the carriage. Um, just look at how your drawstring attaches on the bottom of the carriage and follow suit with something that'll fit. But most often, it's just a simple little loop. I'm sorry I keep drifting off the frame. I'm not paying attention. Anyway, we have a little bit of a tail here. We don't want that because it can get tangled up in the escapement. So we're just going to snip that off. And with this nylon cording, you can see it gets a little frayed at the end. So we're going to need a little bit of heat to... Um, Seal that off. See if I can do this first try. Okay, ah, oh, shit, that shouldn't have done that. Oh well. I'm just going to singe that gently. Okay, and there we have the first end of the loop. Now, coming back up to our full view of the typewriter. Um, our loop is going to attach from the far end of the carriage, so we're going to make sure on our margin release and the carriage is returned all of the way. And we're going to hold, pl plus a little excess, the end of our draw band on the far end of the carriage here. And just kind of eyeball where it lines up with the mainspring drum and give yourself about an extra, extra inch to work with. And we're going to mark that section here, and that's where we are going to tie a knot into the string, just like that. So you can see my knot. Oh, my camera's running low on battery. And so, anyway, there's one knot there. We're going to tie a second knot over it just to make it larger. And sometimes you can do a third, but I don't think we're going to need that on this machine. So let's go ahead and snip it and seal the end. And we're good. Now what I like to do first is actually attach the draw band onto the carriage. Because if you're doing a new draw band, that means your mainspring has no tension. So we're going to loop it over the little post on the bottom of the right end of the carriage. And from the left end, we're going to use a really long spring hook. Um, this is actually a repurposed embroidery hook that has a bent tip. 
There we go, pop that open. And I'm going to thread this through from the left side of the machine. You're gonna to wanna to make a straight shot from the top of the mainspring to this post and keep it as even as possible so nothing gets tangled up in the gears. Now, like an idiot, I didn't double check myself, but this is probably fine. We're going to take the end of our draw band and hook it onto the end of our little spring hook. It's really difficult to do this with the camera. Once that's tight, we are going to reach around to the other side of the machine and just pull that all the way through. Came off my little post there, but that's okay. Well, you always want to try and keep a little bit of tension on it so there's no slippage. And now back on this end of the machine, we have our draw band and we're ready to install that on the mainspring. But first, we have to wind this up. So we're always going to go the opposite direction of the way the carriage um, hooks on. And I'm going to stop recording as I do this so I don't like slip and cut my finger or something and my camera runs out of battery and all you see is blood at the end of the frame. Okay, let's hope this works out first try. Now once we have our mainspring loaded up, we're just going to slip that knot in through the side and pull it tight up through the skinny section of the loop and we can use a screwdriver to just kind of jam it down in there to make sure it's all good. And then we're just going to slowly release and let it take up the extra slack you have in your draw band. And if all goes good, you can let it go. And the carriage starts moving, or in my case, gets stuck for some reason. Well, would you look at that? Working very nicely. Okay, I have an escapement issue, obviously. I'll deal with that later. But the mainspring's working, the draw band's working, the carriage is working, everything's together. And that is the point of the video. So don't focus on any of the other things that I fell short on and just clap your hands and pat me on the back. So hope that helps. If you have any questions, of course, leave them down in the comment section. I always look through those. I'll actually get back to you. So yeah, I have no idea what I'm saying. Goodbye. Well, since you were so patient with me, here's a little bit of a sneak peek at this rail. Now, there's no front feet because the front feet were damaged. The screws that hold them into the base actually were stuck, so I had to drill those out. I'm waiting on replacement feet, and that might be a little bit, but for now, the machine is mostly together, and it just looks incredible. I didn't put the uh, back plate on yet, but I will be. It has, it's going to have brand new rubber feet. I'm going to take this off of my tripod. Da -da -da. I can edit that out, right? Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to have brand new rubber feet from Charles Goo, and then that's about it. It has a brand new platen from JJ Short, brand new feed rollers, and it just looks immaculate. I mean, there's surface rust in a few spots, but uh, for the most part, this is going to be one wonderful typewriter. Yep, there we go. And uh, our little thing with the uh, draw band worked. Look at that. And there's the bell. And I fixed that little thing with the escapement. So, uh, tip top shape.